With several mountain ranges, subtropical temperatures, and ample rainfall, the natural conditions in Taiwan, or Formosa, make it ideal for cultivating teas of the finest quality. In Formosa Tea, players are tea farm owners who strive for the most prestige <coughs> victory points by harvesting the best tea leaves, upgrading their tea processing technology, and developing both domestic and international markets. With unique worker placement and worker advancement me mechanisms tied thematically to tea production, players must allocate their resources wisely to develop their tea's reputation and become the most prestigious tea farm owner in Formosa. All right, so what are y'all looking at here? Well, we have the main game board here with victory point track, round the outside, round the outside, round the outside. Then starting over in the top left-hand corner, we have the weather tiles. This basically dictates how wet the tea that we harvest is going to be, depending on which column it comes from. Then down below that, we have the tea plantation area. There are three types of tea. There are black tea, or the brown cubes. There are green tea, which, wait for it, green cubes. And the oolong tea, or the orange tea. Orange, oolong, kind of works. Black, brown, it works. So go with it. Now, below those are flower bud discs of the three different types of tea as shown. So again, orange, green, or brown discs for the three different types of tea. Now, moving over to the right from there, we have the tea processing tracks for the three different types of tea. At the top, we have the oolong. Notice it has kind of a a orangish color here for the oolong. Down below that we have the black tea with the brown tea leaves there. And then we have the green tea there. Then there is an associated tech tree for each of the three uh, manufacturing um, processing tracks there. Then below that we have the scented tea processing track down here as well as this whole area there. Then down on the bottom left hand side we have the global tea market and the domestic tea market which is this track right there. Then off board we have a number of things. Over on the far left hand side we have the merchant card market so the various that's the recipe fulfillment area uh, as it were. Then up above we have the historical event cards or round tracking for the four different rounds that we're going to have. We have the special action discs over here and off camera we have the uh, random mystery bag of tea cubes. Now in our player tableau normally I would zoom in and you know what let's go ahead and do that regardless. All right. So over here in our player tableau, as you see, these are symmetric player boards. And over on the left-hand side here is the basket. Depending on how wet the tea leaves are when we harvest them, they're going to go whether they're a two wetness, one wetness, or bone dry tea. And you can have a maximum of six as shown up here in the top left-hand corner between the three baskets. So six cubes total. Then moving over to the center part of our player boards, we have the various tea factories where the tea leaves will go for oolong, black tea, or green, depending on how wet they are, and then as they get flavored, moving over to those areas there. Then we have the warehouse, which is going to be sorted by the quality of the processed tea, meaning we have crappy tea, fine tea, or I'm sorry, fine or you know standard tea if you will and then exceptional tea over here in the right hand side there then we have the scented tea factory down below and i also should point out that every player has a total of four workers now you'll notice the shapes of the worker are different we have two tea farmers and two tea masters basically tea masters well, they're masters. They can do any job, whereas tea farmers can do anything but work in the factories for the processing themselves. Okay? So that's pretty much everything that you're looking at here on the, as far as component-wise. And there's a first player marker, and I thought it was thematic, so we'll go ahead and keep it and use that for today. Now, as an overview of what you're trying to do here in Formosa Tea, the goal 
of Formosa T is to score the most victory points. There's considerable scoring during the game and then some scoring at the end of game, which is at the end of the fourth round in a four-player game. Then players move into final scoring, and players are going to predominantly or entirely get victory points from claiming merchant cards, and again, that's kind of the recipe fulfillment aspect of the game, selling to the domestic market the victory points as shown where they are at the top of those, then creating scented teas to convert immediately into victory points based on this chart right here, then advancing along the tech tracks for various types of tea based upon which merchant cards the player has completed. So you'll see that there are certain victory point spots on the various tracks up here that actually make the cards that you've completed during the game worth additional points at the end of the game, and possibly from historical events or these cards up here at the end of the game. And then whoever has the most points wins. So big picture, what you're going to be doing in Formosa Tea is you're going to be placing your workers out here to harvest tea out into these locations. Then you're going to use some of the other workers to come into these processing areas to then process the tea from it being just harvested in your basket into your factory here and using the drying that goes along with the various types getting over to this space. When you're here then you're going to actually take it from your factories and put it into your warehouse and then from your warehouse you're either going to sell it domestically meaning just discard it back into the bag or globally completing some or some, possibly only the right most row of cards but possibly any of the available cards or using turning tea that is here in your warehouse into scented tea to then convert into victory points. So big picture that's kind of what you're going to be doing or what we're going to be doing over the course of four rounds. Whoever does that best at the end of those four rounds wins the game. So big picture does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right so with that said how do you play Formosa T? Well, as I mentioned, the game takes place over four rounds, and each round will consist of multiple player turns, and a round ends when each player has used all of their workers. Now, there is, just because you've placed all four of your workers doesn't mean you've used all of your workers. There may be a way in which you're going to be able to retrieve one or more of your workers on a given turn so that you might be able to take more than four actions in a given turn, but we'll get into that here in a little bit. So you have four workers, you're going to be placing them out here on the board during the worker action phase, and then at the end of all of that, there's a preparation phase for the next round, rinse and repeat, do that four times, go into final scoring. So the first thing that you can do on your turn is harvest tea and advance on the tea processing track. So first things first, as I mentioned, you have two different types of workers. The Farmers can only go out onto the actual plantation discs themselves or to the four markets to be able to sell their tea. Easy enough. Yep. Mm -hmm. The masters can do all of that, and in addition, they can come out here to the four different processing tracks in addition to all of the things that the farmers can do. Okay. But that said, you're going to take one of your workers, or as an option, I should say, you can go out onto one of these plantation tiles. So for instance, I choose to come out, say, out into, onto that tile. I have a choice. I can either take all of one type of tea, meaning all the orange, all the green, or all the black tea, or one of each. Well, in this case, obviously, one of each. Whereas, if I went down to here, I would be able to take all of the black tea, or if maybe I want a green, maybe I take all of the green there. However, in addition to doing so, you're going to then, if you clear off all of the tea that is on that tile, you're going to claim that scented tile as well. So going back to the example, let's say here, you're going to, um, or I am going to take all of this tea here. Now look up above at the weather tile. Now the weather tile shows it is extraordinarily wet tea. So that has to go into the two bucket or basket here because it has a two weather on it. Whereas this one does as well. That one go is bone dry, it's is zero. And that one's mediocre in the one. 
So I will have done so like that. I'm allowed a total of six cubes over in my baskets total, but you'll notice there is no tea left. So in addition to that, I'm going to claim the scented tea or the flower disc in addition to that. Boom, done. Any questions on that action? Nope. If I had chosen this one instead, everything would go into the one like that. Obviously, I'm only limit. I'm limited to six. If I, on a subsequent turn, wanted to come out here and I wanted to choose uh, more tea, I cannot claim all of it. I can only claim one because I have five here. So maybe I do something along the lines of like so. Okay. All right. So that's taking the actual tea out there and putting it into your basket. Well, in addition to that, if there are any workers of any player in any of these locations on any of the tea processing tracks, they then advance automatically one of two ways. They either automatically advance to the end, regardless of where they are in the track, but they skip all the actions that they jumped over. Or, if they wish, they then can advance however many tier or how many uh, farmers or masters are out in the field at the end of that action. So let me give you an example. So let's say, and let's do a little manipulation here. There. Let's say I had taken that action there. And on a previous action, Andrew already had placed one of his tea masters up there to process some amount of tea. We'll get into the details of that in a little bit. At the end of my action, how many workers are out here? There is one out in that row of fields. So therefore, Andrew has a choice. He could either advance all the way to the end there, skipping those other actions, or he could advance the same number of spaces as there are tea workers in the field or tea farmers in the field, and then carry out each and every action that he either passed or landed on. So for instance, if then maybe Greg comes out here and puts his work on a subsequent turn, then Andrew has the same option. He can make it all the way to the end, skipping everything, or there's now two workers. He would go one, two, and he would do both this action and that action because both what he passed over and what he ended on. Does that make sense? Yep. All right, so that is taking T from out here and then automatically advancing each and every uh, worker or, or tea master that is in the associated tea processing plant. Any questions on that action whatsoever? Nope. nope. Easy enough. So we will manipulate Oops. that back if you guys can help. There we go. All right. So now let's go ahead and let's say on a subsequent turn, and you know what? I'm going to redo this. I realize I should have kept it there. So maybe <laughs> I've done that. On a subsequent turn, I choose to process my tea. So I have some tea over here in my baskets and I wish to process it. So you know what? We're actually gonna bring it over here so you guys can see that a little bit clearer. So on a subsequent turn, I take one of my tea masters and I say, hey, I want to go ahead and process black tea. So the black tea area is right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there. So what happens here is first off, there are four tracks, as I mentioned, there is oolong, there's black, there's green. So if I'm processing black tea, then I would put my worker on the black tea processing track, easy enough. So what I do here is uh, after I've placed my tea master out there, I take all of the associated tea and put it into the factory for that type of tea, oolong, black, or green. So this being the two wet, or the numero, number two wetness and number one wetness. You cannot leave tea of that type behind. You process everything that you have there. So in this case, I have three tea cubes in two and one tea cube of one there. Easy enough, right? Yep. Any questions on that step so far? Nope. 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 Then after I've done that, then I'm going to activate and do whatever the action, the associated action is. And actually, what we'll do is we'll go over all of the associated actions between the three main processing. We're going to double back onto the scented tea at the very end because that actually does something once it's completely processed with further processing. Okay. So in this location, when I placed here, this says I automatically dry one wetness worth of drying. So what does that mean? Well, that means I can either drop one cube down from a one to a zero or a two to a one. 
Easy enough. So let's say I choose to do something along the lines of that. Boom, done, easy enough. When I advance to this area here, this says I can take one cube in the one wetness area and put it into Flavor Town. What does that mean? Well, each of the three factories has a flavoring area. So in other words, the one wetness whoop, moves over like so when I get to that location. This one is the exact same as this, except it must be come from the two wetness area, meaning whoop, like that, easy enough. Now, what if I did not have any two wetness? I could not do one or two of these to move over. That's not how this works. It says specifically from the two wetness area over to the flavor area. So in that case, it would be something like that when I get to this area. Then finally, here, exactly like these from the zero area, except you can do that up to twice. So you'll notice I don't have any. Won't, won't. So unfortunately, I don't get to do that. Okay? Easy enough when you activate those. And you'll notice that these are uh, somewhat different here, whereas on the oolong, you dry one. On this one, you dry two total. Meaning, you either dry one from a two to a zero, or two from, say, a two to a one, and then a one to a zero. However, you mix and match two steps of drying on that. One from a uh, wetness one to flavor town, to just like this one, that is identical. And all of these we've already covered. So easy enough for all of those tea processing steps there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? Nope. In addition to that, when you have started processing, there's a handy dandy little chart up here that shows that you're going to, depending on the number of cubes that you put over here, so again, let's say it were something, I think it was like this, from the moment I moved them from my basket over here, which that happened as soon as I put my worker there, depending on whether I did at least three or as many as five, possibly more, but you get credit for three and five respectively, you then get to advance along the tea, uh, tra uh, processing tech track. So, I moved over four cubes. Well, that's higher than three, less than five, so I get one technology bump along that track. Boom, done. When you cross one of these thresholds here, something is go you're either going to claim something or it's going to activate endgame scoring. So all of these disks out here have associated disks, as you can see here. And we'll go over those very briefly. The green ones are one-time use. When you use them, you use them when you choose to, and they do something immediately. This one allows you to immediately sell at the global market, but we'll go into that here in a little bit. This one here allows you to not only advance one step on the drying, but then you get to do whatever spot you did twice. So if you, this one, you would be able to do four times because you get to do it twice, twice. Make sense? So when you expend those, when you use that action as an anytime action on your turn, you then replace it back to the supply. Whereas these guys out here, the yellow ones are extra special because you get to keep them like luggage. You get to keep them forever. And in addition to that, they, go into specific slots, you'll notice, into your factories. You have two slots for each, and they are temporarily installed in your factories, okay? So for instance, if I had already advanced here and I got one of these, maybe when I moved my T over, when I processed it, I already had that, and so, that technology bump allowed me to get that and I choose to install it. What that means is you immediately get to do whatever it says. So not only do I get to activate this, but I, in addition, get to do that. So this says I can do that and I get to drop down one for the activation space on what I, where I went. Now, if I had two of those, I could install two of them. If I had a mix and match, so for instance, if I had this one installed as well, I would also be able to do that immediately as a one-time thing. Now I did say that you keep these forever. However, when you install them in a factory, they are there 
throughout the entire process until all of this tea makes it into your warehouse. Once it makes it into your warehouse, then you just kind of reset it and keep it over here and you can reuse it whenever you move from your basket into one of your choice of factories. Does that make sense? Yep. yep. All right, so let's go over what these are. Although, I'll be honest, I think you guys at home can figure out what all of these four do since they actually coincide with the other actions during the actual processing. So moving from two wetness to flavor town, one wetness to flavor town, two in zero to flavor town, and two steps of drying, meaning I could take that all the way down or I could go one in one, something like that. Okay. Which I realize is the exact same equivalent, but <laughs> work with me on that. All right. So that is advancing along these tracks. Now, these spots right here are for in-game scoring. Normally, whenever you activate or whenever you claim one of those merchant cards, you score it immediately, which I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but that's it. However, at the end of the game, if you have eclipsed any of these spaces, depending on the type of card it is shown in the top left-hand corner there, if I, for instance, had claimed that top corner one right there, you'll notice that this one here shows if I have advanced my technology all the way to here, that shows that black tea merchant cards are worth three points at the end of the game. Meaning this here will be worth an additional three points in addition to whatever I've scored down here during the game. Easy enough, right? Yep. All right. So that takes care of processing the tea along these tracks. Any questions on that? Nope. Now, if somebody had gone out here, then on a subsequent turn, and maybe Greg comes out there, he claims that those two, at the end of that action, what happens? Everybody that's along this advances how many steps? One step, because there's one worker out here. So I would either advance here, which then immediately goes whoop, there as the action, or in lieu of that, I could just go there to where I'll be able to move it over into my warehouse at my leisure, okay? All right, so that is the T processing step, or option, as it were. All right, any questions on any of that? Nope, nope. All right, I think I've covered the discs pretty well at that point, but now let's go ahead and talk about T completion. So, let's say on Greg's turn, he took his T there, and I choose not to do any of these steps, and I choose to just advance to go. Making a joke there, but I advance all the way to the T completion step, okay? So I said on your turn you're going to be placing out one of your workers, yada, yada, yada. Well, there is one exception to that, and that exception is on your turn, if you have a worker out here in any of the four completion places, you may, in lieu of placing a worker, you can retrieve that worker to then complete the processing of that type of the uh, or of that associated type of tea. So how do you do that? Well, on my turn, instead of placing a worker, and I could leave it out there and maybe do that as my last action, et cetera, et cetera, but I say, you know what, I'm going to take this guy back, which now means I'm going to finish processing all of my black tea. So how does that look? Well, we look over here, and we look at our current status on our tea, and we look at this handy dandy little chart up here in the top right hand corner. This says, if you have a total of three wetness or higher total between all of that batch of tea, that's crappy tea. So it will all go into the crappy tea area. Okay, it's poor quality. So you'll notice that in this case, by jumping all the way ahead and choosing to not either dry or to move it over to flavorings, I have crappy tea because it's three wetness. So in that case, all four of these tea go over there, boom, done, okay? It's processed. I now that it's in my warehouse, I now can actually sell it or use it to actually score points, which is the goal of the game. However, advancing over here, let's say it doesn't, it's not three or more wet, but then you hoping it's exceptional tea. For it to be exceptional tea, it must be bone dry, meaning there can be no wetness, so it must be some amount of tea down in zero or no wetness total, and a minimum of two flavorings here. So in this case, it could be either that, it could be that, it could be that, all of that is bone dry tea, 
and has at least two flavorings. In that case, it is exceptional quality, or as I like to call it, Edwards tea. So <laughs> we then move all of it over here. But then we have to look at this. How many flavorings were there? If there were at least three, you immediately score three, six, 10, or 15 points respectively, depending on how many flavorings. Well, obviously, I only have four cubes, so it couldn't have been more than six points worth, but you get the idea. If it were only two, it's zero points, but it's exceptional quality. That'll come in handy here in a little bit. Well, at that point, let's say it were something along the lines of like so. So it's not at least three wet, it's not bone dry in two flavorings, it's a little bit wet, meaning it's standard tea, right? It's Bigelow, it's Celestial Seasoning, it's, you know, something like that. It's not the loose leaf that you get online from, from high-end dealers. No, this is the stuff you buy, maybe, well, you get the idea. All right, <laughs> so it's just normal tea, right? Yeah. So in other words, all of this, it doesn't matter if it doesn't meet one of those two criteria, it's just standard regular tea and it would go there. There can be a, a uh, there can be all types in all of them. It Just because there's black tea here doesn't mean there can't be green tea here later, et cetera, et cetera. There is no minimum to the number of tea that you can process at any one time, meaning one cube to a maximum of six cubes, obviously, because that's all you can have in your basket. I do want to point out, however, once you have started processing tea, you cannot process the same type of tea again, meaning you can't add to that later on once you've already started that processing step. Now I could start a different type of tea at the same time. That's legit, but you can't do two of the same because they're individual batches, all right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, then if I, when I processed all of my tea, okay, let's be realistic, it's gonna be exceptional. Uh, <laughs> once I have done so, then these then unlock to then be able to be reused later on, okay? Does that make sense? Yep. yep. All right, easy enough. So now we have some tea in our warehouse. So on a subsequent turn, I now notice I have an additional worker. Or let's say on a previous turn, maybe I'd come out here, I'd gotten some tea. I had no workers left. Normally when you're out of workers, you must pass. However, if you have somebody out here in lieu of passing, you can then retrieve that worker to then finish processing and, oh, hey, look at that, I still can take another action. So that is how you can take additional actions on your turn, or on, in a given round, I should say. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, all right. All right, so, on your turn, but let's say I had some workers left out here, I then can choose to sell to the various markets. So we'll start with the domestic market. So when I come out here, I can choose to use either a tea farmer or a tea master. And these, all of these spaces out here, there's no limit to the number of workers. There is no limit to the number of different workers, of players that can be out here. However, out here in the farms or in the plantations, one worker per location per year. Now, there is one small exception to that. And that is, if I have placed there I cannot place another worker of mine in that location. I can do that, that's legit. And Greg could come over here and do that, that's legit. But it's one worker per location per player for these four locations. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So let's start out with the domestic market. The domestic market says, hey, you're gonna sell to the domestic market, or as we like to call it, the bag. And depending on what kind you sell or what mix and match you sell dictates how many spaces you advance on that track. So if you sell three cubes or two cubes, you advance two steps. If you, if you sell three cubes, you advance three steps. Easy enough. If you land on any of these locations that uh, provide some sort of bonus, you immediately do that bonus. So let's say I choose to sell two of these. They go back into the bag. I advance two spaces on this, and then I immediately get a track, a tech track bonus, or bump, on one of the three tech tracks. Which one, you might ask? Follow your heart. Choose any one that you wish. 
So I may choose this one, I might choose that one, I might choose that one, however I wish to mix and match. Once you've reached a space on this track, you will never go backwards, you will only advance forward, and you're going to score victory points at the end of the game based on where you are. Any questions on that? And the two and three cubes that you give up, if it's two, it's the same, if it's three, it's three different. Correct, right, meaning two of the same, meaning two brown. What I could not do is sell three to advance three, they must be three different types. I do want to point that out. Thanks for reminding me, Shrey. All right, any questions on domestic market? Nope. Okay, and notice it does not matter the quality. So getting rid of your cheap quality tea this way is probably a pretty good use of it. Now the international market or the global market, there are three different locations and each one conveys a different bonus, although the actual function of it works the same. Whether I'm here, here, or here, I get to complete one of those contracts out there on the far right edge only. Then, so let's go back, hand me that card. Let's say, hey, I'm gonna choose this one to complete. So getting back to my example earlier, I had exceptional quality tea. So we look over here, the exceptional quality tea, it would require me to get rid of two of those, back to the bag, so okay, I will do so, and I pay 10 points immediately. If it were mediocre or standard quality, I would pay six points. If it's crappy quality, I score six points. However, you'll notice that little icon right there says, oh, if it's crappy quality, you get the six points, but you do not get to keep the card. Meaning, okay, I completed it, I score the points, and I get rid of the card. It goes out of the game. The reason for that, as I mentioned earlier, there might be some in-game points here, there might be something up here for the events up there. Easy enough? Yep. Now, last thing I want to point out is if it were something along the lines of this, because from two different batches of tea, if I choose, or maybe I only have that, if I choose to do this and this, it's the lowest quality denominator, meaning it's crappy tea. So, meaning I score six points and I can't keep the card because I diminish the quality of this exceptional tea with the crappy quality. Make sense? Yep. All right. Easy enough? That is here. In addition to that, I get to advance one on the tech track. Which tech track? Follow your heart. Any one that you want. One space. This one, complete one card, and I should say that those immediately will slide and refill. So there, and then we would take the next card. Now those are numbered into three different kind of phases, if you will. There is a level one card, a level two card, and a level three card. They get to be a little bit more involved, but also generate more points as you go along. All of these are level one cards, except for this one is a level two. Then there's the level twos. When the twos run out, we refill with threes, etc., etc. This one, you get to complete one card from the right-hand side only, or right or the right uh, column, and then you immediately advance on one of the tracks and then activate it twice, just like the special ability of that one. Okay? If you get to complete one card on the right hand edge and then immediately, as if you had used another worker, claim one of the locations out here, but you actually don't put your worker out there. You just take it. So if I went there, so maybe I want those two oolongs and those will come from the one wetness area those will join up there, boom, done. That's what that gets allows me to do. If I had emptied that, I would be able to claim the scented tile, or the, uh, the flower pod for the scented uh, tea later on. Any questions on that? Yeah, uh, does that action push the workers along the processing as well? Um, that is a really good question. I don't think it I do does. not believe so because it does not actually put a worker up to that. Yeah, I don't think it does. And without spending a worker, so it does not say in the rules that it does, so I would say no. Okay. Okay? All right. There is another way in which you'll be able to sell to the global market, and that is by using one of these tiles that has the little ship or boat on it. And that, those tiles are exceptionally powerful. And the reason for that is if at any point you have one of these, claim say there, there, or there, it's a one-time use. 
You act as if you had taken one of these spaces, but you don't get the bonus. But what you do get to do is sell to any of the 12 cards that are out there. So it's only via these can you sell to anything other than the right-hand edge. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right? And then when you choose to do that on your turn, you then discard it back to the supply. That's pretty much the entire game except for the scented tea. All right? So scented tea works a little bit different. So let's say we have some crappy tea up here, and let's say we have, we have, those have been claimed, here we go. So I have a couple of scented tea tiles there, and I have some tea over here in a warehouse already, all right? On my turn, I say, hey, I'm gonna send one of my tea masters to the scented tile area. So, what happens at this point is just like going over here, I'm going to take the, t the T that is in the area that I choose and put it down like so. Then in addition to that, you'll notice that I can choose to place one flower pod or flower tile onto the scented t uh, T area. You'll notice that there are indentations or little places where you could put three different, three different tiles. So let's say I choose to do that. Then someone comes up here and claims one of these, which again, as always, pushes my worker over. So then maybe I choose to put a second one. And I can do that up to three times because there are three spaces up here, okay? Now I do want to note that those flower tiles are one-time use and then they're out of the game once you use them. But then somebody comes up here, puts another worker, so now I advance all the way to here. So on a subsequent turn, I then choose to remove that worker to then process that T just like I would normally, except this step is a little bit different because it's scented T. So what this says is I get two points or a multiplier of two for each same color flower pod tile that matches the T. So same color, same color times two different color times one. So what does that mean? I have four T here. I have one of each. This is times two, this is times one. So total, that'd be times three. Four times three, that'd be 12 points. So I immediately get rid of these out of the game. These go back into the bag, like so. And I immediately would score the 12 points. And I advance one on one of the tech tracks of my choice. Boom, that's scented tea. Any questions on that? Pretty easy. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a second step, but you're either going to use scented tea, domestic market, global market, or global market plus once your tea has been processed, okay? So that we're going to continue taking actions until all of us have passed. Once a player's passed, they're out. Then we go into the preparation phase. The preparation phase is pretty simple. So first off, advance the tea processing track. Well, if somebody had workers up here, how many workers? We then do this again. So here, one, like so. And then we do the action in the location where you remained, okay? Easy enough? All right, and if, if, I, if there were two here, right. in this case, then he would go two and only do the action in the last spot that you landed as opposed to during the round you would do every spot that you actually landed on or passed. Easy enough? Yeah. All right. The next one is we're going to resolve the historical event card. So these were randomly chosen out there. There's a deck of historical random cards out there. There's a whole bunch of them and they go chronologically. So this is the in our uh, world here, this is how the process went for this game. So it starts in 1867 and ends in 1964. We will do whatever the event is and we'll talk about those uh, before we get started so everybody can plan accordingly on that. Then we'll get rid of the card unless it's an end game scoring card and then everybody retrieves their workers back. So there you go. 
Then we're going to adjust the weather tiles. Adjusting the weather tiles means we're going to slide down and flip one of the tiles over. So it's going to be a continual conveyor of changing weather as we go along. Then we're going to have growth of new T. We're going to put down one new cube up to a total of three, unless it's exceptionally wet, which hey, extra wetness, extra growth, you put down two up to a total of three cubes total, and then pass the start player marker, rinse and repeat, do that four times, and then we go into final scoring. So final scoring is we're going to score victory points for any of the domestic market. We're going to score victory points, any merchant cards. So in this case, I would score any black tea, three points per card in addition to any scoring that I did. So in other words, I would score three additional points for this card because I have passed the three point. If I were all the way to here, I would score six points for that, easy enough. And then score any points from end of game cards. Whoever has the most points wins. And that's how you play Formosa T. There we go. So we need to reset the disaster that I created. I have no idea how these were. I do. Okay, awesome. There's that, there's that, and maybe there. Uh, like Christopher is saying that uh, when you make scent of tea, the tech track you move up on is... Oh, correct. The is the type of tea that you processed. Yeah. So in the example I use black tea, I would actually advance on the black tea track. Thank you, Christopher. Good call. All right. 